Hey everyone, my name is Karina and I am at CLC Studios here in North Bay. Uh, um, it's my art studio um, where I create my wonderful paintings. <laughs> I'm a little biased because I'm the artist that creates them. I moved here after I met my husband and now we have our, our, our family with our three kids and whatnot. I started um, art when I was young, very young. I remember getting in trouble for doing arts and crafts instead of my chores. So it started off young and then I went to art school um, a few years after high school and uh, my life kind of did a couple little twists and turns and then after my, my children were school age I was able to refocus on my art. Um, it is a passion of mine. I would do it every day, all day long if I could, <laughs> but I can't. Uh, so I fit it in whenever I can. Uh, right now I am mainly working with alcohol inks and acrylics. Um, so this is this is kind of the alcohol ink. It's a bit of an example for you. Um, and this is the, the acrylics that I'm kind of working with. Um, I tend to work in, in an abstract style. I find I can convey energy and emotion and mood and depth and textures um, much easier in that abstract style uh, and that's what I'm kind of getting at. I want the viewers to, I want you to shut off your logical mind and I want your subconscious and your emotional mind to take over um, and just see what you can see and listen to your thoughts. I have a firm belief that everybody is creative. Um, doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, what kind of art tools you have, you can always create something. Okay, here's the tutorial part. You have the, the watercolor paper and all these supplies within your kit. Um, the only things I don't think you have are the waterproof pens. Um, you don't need to use this. This is just something that um, I like to do. I like to outline my uh, shapes and then fill them in. I, I like how it looks. It kind of makes them stand out a little bit more. Um, but you absolutely don't need that one. That's just a personal preference for me. Um, and if you are going to use a, a, a pen or a marker to outline your, your uh, shapes first, just make sure that they are waterproof. <laughs> Otherwise you're gonna get big smears and you won't be happy. So uh, that's an option, optional thing if you want. Um, so I have my paper here. I've already gone ahead and taped down the edges um, just to keep it in place so it doesn't move on me. And, and then also make sure I have nice, smooth, sharp edges as well. Um, this is the size of paper that I'm going with. You can use something bigger like this. This one is actually half of a full sh uh, sheet of watercolor paper for me. So I just tore it in half with a ruler and then halved it again and I got the little one. Um, and the tape that I use to tape down the edges is called washi tape. Um, it basically, it's a decorative tape, but I use it for this because it's not terribly sticky on the back and it won't tear your paper uh, when you go to take it off. Other tapes like masking tape and scotch tape, they're gonna probably tear your paper when you take it off. Um, so just, just be careful for that. Now, if you do need to use a masking tape, if you take your, your, your length, and I know you can't see it, but if you, if you stick it down on your pant leg, for a second and then lift it up, it won't be as sticky because it got kind of fuzzy. So that is a good um, tip so that if you do need to use it, it won't tear your paper when you're done. Um, okay, so I've gone ahead and I've chosen the colors of watercolor pencils that I would like to use. Um, I'm running off of this the, the, the first sample that I did. Um, it's a fairly large piece, um, so we're just gonna do a smaller one here for a couple techniques. Feel free to get bigger when you're doing it at home and whatnot, uh, but for, for the tutorial, we're gonna be a little bit smaller. And I really liked this donut right here with the purple, and it's kind of like the vanilla dip or whatnot. Um, so I'm gonna recreate this donut here on our little paper. Um, so. I like to set out the colors that I'm going to use. It's called setting your palette if you wanna get real fancy, um, but picking your colors works just as well. So I'm gonna go with the purple glaze, this part and the green background. So I've gone ahead and gotten my the colors that I do need there and uh, we're ready to go. Now, uh, to make the circle of the donut, we're just gonna go ahead and, um, I forgot a pencil. See, things happen, mistakes happen, I'm human, no big deal. So what we're gonna do is I am gonna use this to create the circle part. Um, you don't have to freehand everything. There are certain little tricks we can, we can do to make it a little bit easier for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down uh, and I'm gonna trace it in pencil. 
So we're gonna zip right around and don't push very hard. You wanna go nice and light because you are going to erase it afterwards, okay? Um, well, you may not need to, depends on how the next step goes. Uh, so I have the outside of the donut there and we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using the roll of my washi tape because it actually happens to be the right size. Use what you have, that's, that's what I say. Use what you've got uh, and just keep creating. So I've got that down. I'm gonna go ahead and circle on the inside. Boom, there we go, perfect little donut. Um, so I'm gonna set that over. Now, because I'm using the pen, I, this is where I'm gonna use my pen. If you don't want to, or if you can't, you can use one of your watercolor pencils um, so that the pencil line won't show. Now, I did it in pencil first so that when I went and used my pen afterwards, it's not perfect. I don't want a perfect circle for my ink line on the donut. Um, donuts aren't perfect, so I don't, I don't want a perfect line. If you do want a perfect line, you can trace right away with a pen or your watercolor pencil. Um, but for me, I like a little bit of whoopsie lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace around there. It makes it look more delicious when things aren't perfect. Now, if you wanted to, you can take the time and you can erase your pencil lines if you need to, um, but just make sure the ink is dry on your marker line or else you're gonna get another smear. I've done that lots and I've learned to really let things dry by now. Um, so they're okay and they're dry. I'm gonna get rid of those little pencil marks because I don't need them anymore. There, tidy that up, we're good to go. Now I'm going to also um, outline where I want my glaze to go, that lovely delicious purple glaze. So we're gonna kinda go like this, oh, yep. We're gonna move around. Oh, we're almost nearly at the side because it's gonna have a little bit of a drip. Oh, there. And when I'm doing this, I'm remembering that glaze is very smooth and fluid. And it's gonna kinda do what it wants. It's not gonna be rough and jagged and bumpy. It's gonna be all over the place. Okay, so there's my glaze, and I'm thinking we did have a little bit of a drip. So I'm just gonna freehand a shape right there. Maybe we're gonna add another little bit of drip there. Um, yeah, so maybe we can, uh, I'm gonna put another drip right here. There, perfect. Okay, so now that I have my outline of what I want, now I get to color it in. You basically just did a coloring page for yourself. Now's the fun part. We get to decide what colors we're gonna put where and how we're gonna work with our tools. Um, okay, so watercolor pencils, you get the best of both worlds. You get the fluidity of a watercolor, but you have the control almost of the pencil crayon. So what I found to be easiest is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll color the whole thing and then we'll go back in and add the water details after us. Um, so I start with my lighter color first because I find it easier to layer that way. I can always add more dark in certain areas, but I can never take it off well enough. So there's my first um, lay down of color. And then I'm gonna go back in with a bit of orange. We're gonna give it some depth, maybe color in kind of around the glaze. A bit of shading in there. And then I'm gonna go in with this with this kind of sienna brown in a way. And that's where I'm gonna kind of really push in the, really push in those shadows. I want it nice and deep. Now, here's where you can look at it and say, oh yeah, that looks really great, I'm happy with it. Or something's telling you, you know what, I can push it a little bit further. I wanna see what happens if, if I do this. Yeah, okay, there we go, that's what I want. I really want that deeper brown. So I'm really gonna take that in, add some of that to it, make that donut sing. Whoops, colored outside the lines. Don't worry about it, no big deal. It's the fun of being creative. That's the difference for me between being an artist and being creative. You can be creative and do things like that. You can color outside the lines and it doesn't matter. It's simply so that you're, you're, you feel joy and, you're, and, and your soul is happy, it's, it really is. Um, being an artist is a little bit more self-disciplined. Okay, there we go. I'm happy with that. We can move on. Um, I am going to go ahead and block in the purple icing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in the kit, there's a few different pencil crayons. 
that you're looking at and you're probably going, what the heck? They all look the same. I'm speaking about these three. They all look like dark blue. Um, if you want to, you can test it on a, on a separate piece of paper first. Give a scribble, see what kind of color it is, and then you can go for it from there. Um, but I'm going to use, there's one that has a little bit more red to it. So that's the one I'm going to use today. Um, now again, you choose whatever one you want, and we're going to go for it. Now on this example here, I left a fairly large circle around the middle with nothing on it because I, I want it to I want it to have that that highlight that shine that the glaze is going to have. Um, so I'm not going to color right there. I'm going to mainly keep my colors around on the edges, and then with the water and the brush later, we can blend them together to get that really nice little fade, that fun little fade. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm even going to do it on the on the little blobs here. So we're going to. And I know it's, it's a bit of a weird concept to to color almost in reverse where you really got to make sure that you're not going to fill in where you don't want. Um, and it's always easier to leave too much uncolored or too much white because you can always fill it in. Um, but I don't find it the easiest thing to take the color off if you have put too much on. So this little blob is going to have a reflection right there. I'm going to pretend our light source is coming from this side and shining over. Just like the sun, we're going to pretend like if this was the sun, then he's right there, sun's right there, and all of our highlights are going to be kind of on this side. So this guy there. But, I mean, having said all that about the, the light source, if you don't care or if you don't know how, don't worry about it. Just keep creating. take this around I'm gonna follow this circle here because it's the constant I've made my edges wavy and I don't want to follow that because if you think about a donut it does curve over so the light is gonna hit the very top of the donut which is still a good circle a perfect circle so therefore your highlight will still be a circle Okay, so I've got my my purple circles kind of blocked in, um, and I was pushing fairly hard with the pencil. So now I'm gonna go back in and a little bit more. That's um, I'm gonna push lighter, so I get a, a lighter a lighter color of purple, um, just because I want to be able to blend the darker purple into the white a little bit more gradually. So I'm gonna go do the same thing again um, and lighten up the edges a little bit. Okay, so there we go. Um, and already you can kind of see that there's a better, there's a better gradi gradation right there. So it, it looks more natural already. Um, and it'll, it'll get uh, closed in and colored in a little bit more when we get it wet. So I'm okay with that. Um, as I said, you can always add more if you need to, but it's not the easiest to take it away. So practicing some restraint is, is a good thing sometimes. Um, so now because I kind of want a bit of uh, oomph to my donut, I'm going to add a bit of this pink um, just to kind of warm it up, kind of bring it forward a little bit. Okay, there. So that pink is done. And because I really like getting in there and really playing with the contrasts and whatnot, I'm going to take one of the other um, really deep blues and I'm gonna draw in a bit of the shadows. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick up some of the shadow. So. so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna move on to the background. Um, and because I really liked how punchy and bright and vibrant and bold uh, this green background was with the, with the group of donuts, I'm gonna go ahead and do it again because it worked out really great. So. I have my colors chosen. I'm going to do the the yellow and the light green. Uh, and then knowing me, I'm probably going to pull in a couple darker colors around the outside. Okay. So I've got my green background in, um, but I want to really punch it up a little bit more. 
So I'm going to go through the pencils that we all have and I'm going to choose um, th this green color. It's a little bit more blue to it, but it's a really nice vibrant, almost like a shamrock kind of green. So I'm going to pull that in a little bit to see if I can get a little bit more uh, depth in there and kind of punch it up a little bit. Oh my gosh, I forgot. <laughs> I was just about to say, okay, look at that, we're done. And I forgot the center. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill that in. There we go, that looks better. All right, so now we have the whole thing uh, penciled in and this is this is what we want it to look like. If you wanted to change anything now, um, now's, now's your chance to do it. Because um, once, once we get it wet, if you wanted to add more color anywhere or a bit more, you know, texture or depth or whatever, you'd have to wait for your paper to be fully dry. So I'm going to go ahead and scooch aside my stuff. I like room to work. So this is one of the best, <laughs> the best um, ideas or, or tips that I learned when I was in art school. This is a roll of toilet paper and you squish it down so it's flat. And then when you're when you have your your brush and your painting, you can take off excess water from your brush without removing all the paint on your brush. Um, once once you're using your 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 watercolors and your watercolor pencils, you'll understand what I mean a bit better, um, because you you want to keep the the paint on your brush to paint with, but sometimes too much water is a bad thing. So this will get rid of some of the water on your brush, but leave the majority of the paint. Um, and when it gets too, when it gets too uh, marked up or whatever, you can just tear off the top layer and you're, and you're back down to new toilet paper and you can keep going. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start to paint in the colors. All right, let's start with the donut itself. This is the brush you got in your kit, by the way. So it's the same thing. It's all the same materials you have. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to lightly drag in some of the some of the water. Um, and when you're watching it interact with the watercolor pencil, you'll get a better feel for how it does work. Sometimes people don't want to paint over all the colors. They just want certain areas blended. And that's totally cool. For me, when I go in, I really like painting over all of the areas um, to really get that really nice blend and fade. Um, but again, once you do one or two, then you'll, you'll understand more of, of what you like to do. So for me, this is what I like to do. I get my brush wet right now. I don't need to dab it, um, cause I want all that water in there and I'm just going to start with the lighter colors to blend out so that, um, I don't, I don't cause too much mud, like a muddy kind of color or so that I don't blend the darker colors up into the lighter colors right away. Cause I definitely don't want that. So there we go. I'm just gonna slowly paint over and blend. I'm gonna rinse my brush when I wanna blend the lights into the darks because I don't want to cover up the light with the dark. Okay, so there we go. I've painted the donut. I like how it's faded. I like how it's blended um, and the colors are kind of, they're, they're happily mixed, but not overly mixed to make mud or one solid color. So that's cool there. I'm going to move on to the blobs of icing. Um, I'm hoping that by doing the, the green background last, the other parts have had a little bit more time to dry so that they won't blend all together. And I'm only painting on the purple parts right now. Then I'm gonna give my brush a rinse and then go back in and gently run right around the outside of those. It's just so that it doesn't blend too much. And you know what? I'm gonna leave that little tiny spot right there totally dry, not touched by any paint because I really want that pop of the highlight. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same concept to the donut itself. Um, just being careful of how I blend on the middle um, and I'm going to actually start with that part first. So I'm just going to come in. You can see how there's the purple is being activated already right away. Um, 
and it's giving me the the perfect blend from the light purple to the white highlight. Okay, so I rinsed my brush because I'm starting to get a little bit too much purple there. And you see right there it had dried quickly already and I, I have a little bit of a line there still. Um, so that's what I was getting at earlier about working when it's still wet. I'm just using a bit more water. I wanted a better blend right there, so I just got a bit more water on my brush and I ran back around the edge and because it's still wet, it'll, it'll blend it really nicely. Okay, so that's my painted donut. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. I think it looks great. Um, so I'm gonna leave it. Uh, with watercolor paper, the more you work it, the more you can break down the actual surface of it and it may become kind of um, kind of like fuzzy in a way. So if, you, if you're happy with something, leave it and let it dry and you can always go back in later on to touch a couple things up after it's already dried. But when it's wet, the more you work it, the more you can degrade the paper and it just doesn't look that great. So now we're going to do the background and I'm going to start with the light again uh, and work my way over uh, and then we'll see how it looks at the end. All right, there we go. We're done the background. So um, as you're painting, you'll probably notice that the more you blend, um, the more, okay, hold on here. The more you, the more you're painting and working with the water, the more you're going to be blending your colors. Um, and right around here, I was noticing that I had a lot of um, pencil marks and that I didn't necessarily like. So I just made sure to gently kind of paint over those and kind of blend them out. And they, for the most part, they disappeared. Um, up in here, you'll still see the direction that I colored in, but I don't mind that. That's not a big deal to me. I, I, I'm okay with that. Um, it's just something to kind of keep in mind as you go along. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. That's our donut. That's our, our happy, happy donut that's just waiting to be eaten. Um, okay, so I hope everyone had a really fun time uh, creating their own watercolor pencil crayon picture. Um, and just remember, this is the this is the start of something. This is absolutely the start of something. You can you can choose to continue creating in whatever medium you want, um, and just just have fun with it. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna do things wrong. You're gonna learn. That's how you grow as a creative individual. I make tons of mistakes. Um, and again, that's exactly how I learn. I ruin paintings, I ruin prints, I ruin lots of stuff, but I don't usually make the same mistake twice. So my takeaway from all of this would be to keep being creative. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare yourself to professional artists or what you see on Instagram. Um, social media always has that, that warm and fuzzy filter where things may not be as they truly are. So, so be true to yourself. That's what you really need to be true uh, to. Um, and just keep creating. If you can take 15 minutes out of every day and create something, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, small goals can achieve very big results or very big dreams and whatnot. Um, so don't ever be afraid to create. You don't have to show it to anybody. It doesn't have to be, you know, critically acclaimed and you don't have to sell it for $12,000. But I find that if you if you get into a routine of creating every day, it's like medicine for your soul, and it's wonderful and beautiful. Um, so just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Have a sketchbook and and some simple tools, and you can take it with you when you go somewhere, uh, or you can bring it anywhere in the house or your apartment or wherever you live. Cart it around. Um, yeah. Yeah, so just, just be true to yourself and keep creating. It's so very important uh, for your soul. So yeah, um, if you have any questions or if you ever wanted to reach out and ask me something, go for it, feel free. I love helping people in their creative journey. It's so fun to watch people realize that they have the magic within them. 